What's up, everybody? Back for another live Monday beer review here on the Beer Patrol. If you guys have not been following the channel over the past month or so, I've been uh, doing live reviews on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the future, by mixing some vlogs, maybe even some live chats with fellow beer tubers, we'll see. I might even be doing some duo reviews at some point with other beer tubers. So it's been a lot of fun. I enjoy this, and I'm focusing on grabbing beers that you guys can get or that you've had before, not some special crazy release you can't get your hands on because, you know, where's the interaction? Where's the back and forth? We can't talk about beers that only certain people can get. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. For those of you watching on the replay, in the description box will be time stamps to uh, time stamps to uh, both uh, reviews so you can just jump in and not have to deal with me, you know, rambling on about nonsense. But this is the Beer Patrol. And I ramble about nonsense. That's what I do here. Uh, so the rest of you who are watching this live, you're stuck with me. It's just how it goes. But we should have fun. Anyway, uh, before I get into today's reviews, I want to uh, take a bit of a poll of anybody who's watching. Because most people watch right from the beginning or in the middle. I'll show them a few times. But Raining on Your Parade, he's a viewer of a bunch of people's channels. He always goes, I want you to tell me in advance what you're reviewing on your live stream on Monday nights. At least 48 hours in advance so I can pick up the beer on the weekend, whatever. So I'm going to let you guys do a little quick vote here. I actually have two beers from Dogfish Head. I have their, uh, what is it, their American Beauty, which was the collab with Grateful Dead. It's a, I believe it's a honey granola pale ale. And their Sea Quench, which, believe it or not, I've never had before. I know a lot of you have. I just never picked it up. I was thinking about doing those potentially next week or these two beers, which might be a lot of fun. So I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but Aish, uh, uh, Shankerla, their Rausch beer and their Hellas Lager beer, the canned versions. So both of these have showed up in uh, cans over the past couple months. And Matt over at Mass Beer Reviews, quick shout out to him. Good friend of mine, fellow beer tuber, one of the better beer tubers, one of the bigger beer tubers as well. Uh, he actually reviewed this on his channel, did a whole uh, like background on how they actually can this. So Be United actually imports this beer, uh, both these beers, into the States. And they actually bring it over on a huge tanker and they can it. They can it on U.S. soil. So most of you have probably seen these in the bottles, but now they're canning them over here in the States. And I thought this would make for a cool like duo live review because I'm not a huge fan of smoke beers. I've had this beer before and it's just not for me. But then again, it's been five plus years. So it'd be fun to revisit it and then try out the, uh, the Hell's Lager beer. This isn't technically a smoke beer. I believe it just imparts smoke flavor from the brewery. They don't actually use smoke malts or anything. This one, obviously they do. So would you rather me do the Dogfish Head uh, duo review or these two? Let me know. Um, I'm leaning towards those because I think it would be a lot more fun. So let me check the comments before we get into what beers I'm reviewing today. We have uh, 420, Christoph. He says, I'll be home in a few seconds. All right, Christoph. Eric Lyons fan shows up, says, what up, homie? What's up, Eric? Uh, and then we have Chris off the 10 says, do both. Chris, settle down. And then we have Redbeard says, what be going down, peoples? I've just settled down, Redbeard. We have Alex says, what up, y'all? Hope your Mondays are going well. Going pretty well, Alex. So thank you, man. Uh, we also have Maxwell Star, Nick, of the infamous Beer Analysis 101 says, hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to the uniformless beer patrol. Tonight, we're going to look at a beer that isn't in the episode title. Correct. We're going to review those and not Bigfoot. Shut up, Nick. And then Chris says, do all the reviews. Well, that's what I'm trying to do, Chris. Nothing but reviews. But anyway, let me know what you prefer. Uh, I know a lot of people can get the dogfish head stuff. Maybe a lot of the people can't get the canned versions. Doesn't matter if they're canned or bottled. We should be fine. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw them out at the end, maybe in the middle, you know, as people show up. If people show up or up to 11 watching now, holy crap, that's on them. Uh, so anyway, the beer, well, the beers that I'm reviewing today come from Sierra Nevada, the Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, and they're out of both Chico, California and Mills River, North Carolina. And the first one is their Bigfoot Ale. This is a classic. This is American style barley wine. It comes in at 9.6% uh, alcohol by volume, 90 IBUs. And at the time of review, this bottle is right around three months old. And as you can see here on the cap, it's a 2019 vintage, so this is the latest release of the Bigfoot uh, Ale. And then I also have the barrel-aged Bigfoot, but this is the 2013 vintage. And uh, basically, this is that beer. Not specifically this beer. It's probably the 2012 vintage uh, Bigfoot Ale. And they throw it into oak whiskey casks for over a year. Comes in at 12.2% alcohol by volume, 90 IBUs. And at the time of review, this bottle is somewhere 
uh, right around six years old, maybe a little bit over six years old. But yeah, this is uh, this has been in my cellar for a long time. So first things first, let me talk a little bit. Let me go on a Greg from Greg's Beer Review, a little bit of a rant here, baby. Uh, so Bigfoot shows up every year. This is the supposed 2019 vintage. They bottled this on December 19th of 2018. So they bottled this in 2018. This did not show up until about a month ago. So you're getting fresh. And let me let me use air quotes here. Fresh. Fresh. We're getting fresh Bigfoot already over two months old. They now have the Mills River location. So I don't know how Sierra Nevada can't get this beer into markets under two months old. Here's the thing, though. I don't care. That's because when it comes to barley wines, English barley wines are my jam. American barley wines, very hit or miss for me. I prefer everything that an English barley wine uh, bring, brings to the table, the caramel, the toffee, the big burnt sugars, the just the malt-driven characters of the beer. Then you get the American styles, which usually are always, you know, hop forward and they always have to be hoppy. And when it, when you do that with the barley wine for me, it's just, it's not my favorite. So I like this beer aged at least six months, sometimes a couple years. So I haven't had a fresh bottle in probably three or four years. So it's going to be interesting to see this one at three months old. I don't know. I would not be surprised if I'm a, not a huge fan of it. And the uh, 2013 here, Bigfoot barrel, barrel aged. This was one that I had planned on sharing with uh, all of my Canadian beer tubing friends, going back to the original Albino Rhino Beer Festival. We do the bottle share the night before every year. I didn't bring it up the first year, didn't bring it up the second year. And it got to a point where it was like, this is actually now kind of readily available. You can find barrel aged Bigfoot almost everywhere Sierra Nevada uh, distributes. And What's the point of it? Now it's six years old. It's probably past its prime. I've never had this one fresh, this specific one. I've had a couple different barrel aged uh, Bigfoots. I think the la last one I had was 2015 or 2016. It's a delicious beer uh, when it's relatively fresh. Let's see what six years did to it. I have no idea. I'd imagine it's going to be probably somewhat flat with carbonation and whatnot, but it should be interesting and it's 12.2%. One good thing about this, you know the barrels were relatively wet, 9.6, 12.2. You're adding basically two and a half percentage points. Should be a great time. Anyway, check comments before I crack open the Bigfoot. We have um, we have head coach here. So shout out Elish Bishart. I, I'm not even drunk yet, head coach. Uh, Alex says, also PS Joe, I'm still a bit burnt from your saber shirting my blues last night. Well, you can be a little less burnt when your team makes the plays playoffs and mine doesn't, uh, Alex. Uh, Redbeard says he's always settled. That is a lie. Eric Kilber shows up and says, cheers, Sons." Yes, cheers, Eric. Uh, Eric Lyons fan says, Joe with the 2013. Yes, but this is not a 2013 um, IPA that was hanging out in somebody's uh, grocery store cooler for six years. Uh, we have uh, 420 says, Bigfoot equals knife and fork. Yep. Craig from Camp Beer Review shows up and says, uh, hey, guys, what's up? What's up, Craig or Greg, as so many people like to call you? Bumpy Rhodes Jesse shows up, says, Joe getting sloshed tonight. Yeah, for sure. Um, we have Chris off the 10 says, we're about to do a live reaction to this live stream. Get on it, Chris. It's going to be terrible. Uh, Eric Alliance fan says, agree with you, ran on the Bigfoot Ale. We just got last week, seen a guy with a sixer. Yo, I think they come in four packs, don't they? Or did they, did they change them to sixes? Uh, we have Jesse says, I've never had Bigfoot, but I held a bottle in my hand once. You need to pick it up. This is a classic, Jesse. Come on now. Um, then Nick showing up and doing a poor job trolling, but it is a better job than you were. He says, didn't know you like to get wet. And in parentheses, he says barrels. Dave, okay, I was going to go do the, the whole Chappelle show sketch, but I didn't. Uh, 420 says, let me put Nikolai on the paddle and I'll be on fiber in my net dragon ass. All right, so I'm going to crack open the regular Bigfoot. We're going to get it into glass and see what's going on here. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm not the hugest fan of this fresh. Um, it's not a bad beer fresh at all. Like it's good. It's extremely well made for the style. It's just for me, it's not, not what I'm looking for typically. So, so uh, that pours out this really nice, like deep copper, almost like mahogany color. Wow. That looks actually pretty awesome. Has about a finger and a half of a straight up khaki colored head. Honestly, looks pretty awesome. That looks like a, a, just an amazing beer. If you're looking for a barley wine, whether American or English, I'd imagine this is kind of, kind of what you need to do so anyway let's get a nose on it yeah so yeah i mean i don't know why i expected anything different so there's tons tons of sweetness on the nose there's caramel toffee brown sugar even a little bit of like citrus qualities probably coming from the hops like orange a little bit of grapefruit even a little juiciness 
It's not an IPA or anything, but a little bit of juiciness. But then there's this like really unmistakable, just pine resin quality to the nose from the hops. I, I don't know what they're using in the hops. I don't, they don't say in the back. They just have a spiel about the beer. Bigfoot is a beast of a beer brimming with bold, bittersweet malt flavor and heaps of whole cone Pacific Northwest hops, probably Cascade and a bunch of others. Well, maybe just Cascade because when they first originally uh, produced this, it was first introduced in 1983, there weren't a ton of different hops, uh, certainly not uh, Pacific Northwest hops. Bigfoot is a call classic prized by beer collector, drink a fresh or cellar in a cool, dark place to taste as the flavors develop over time. That's how I prefer it. Chris trolling, is there any molasses? Uh, no molasses in this one, Chris, settle down. Yeah, it's, listen, it smells pretty good. It's just, I know when I taste it, the first thing that's gonna hit me is everything I love about English style barley wines, and then the hop flavor is gonna come in, the bitterness is gonna come in, and it's gonna kind of just disappoint me. And again, understand why people love this beer, whether it's fresh, aged, or whatever. For me, I always prefer this fresh, I mean, uh, aged, we'll see what it, it tastes like super fresh, super fresh, three months old. Anyway, cheers. Well, <clears throat> I guess I'm gonna eat crow and uh, take back everything I fucking said about it because I'm an idiot. This is delicious. <laughs> Holy shit, this is delicious. I, it has to be my palate has been changing over the last year or two just with a lot of these beers um, because this is this is fucking super tasty. First off, there is so much great malt sweetness in this one. There is a little bit of molasses, Chris, and yes, I love Jeff Goldblum, but only in Jurassic Park. No, I love him generally. He's a great actor. Uh, yeah, this is fantastic. Um, tons of caramel and toffee, molasses. It has a big like brown sugar, burnt sugar note to it right up front. Passes through the palate. Yeah, the pine resin hits, but it's not as overbearing as I remember it being. It dries out the palate nicely. And then there's like a moderate like resinous pine character, a little bit of like pithy grapefruit. The thing I love about this is that on the palate, I cannot detect the 9.6. This does not have a burn. Craig, can't be review said, does this have a burn? This does not have a burn. Um, it does have a warming into the chest, into the stomach. I can definitely tell it's a bigger beer, but on the palate, I think hashtag, I believe he has an adult palate now, Chris, you, I think you have an adult palate. If you do have an adult palate, then yes, uh, you should be able to handle this. The crazy thing about this is that fresh, relatively fresh, this is not overly complex. When I've had this, you know, age three, four, five years before, it has such a complexity to it. This one only has like maybe like three or four different notes, maybe maybe a half dozen max, but they're all very cohesive, as I like to say. Paul always calls me out and saying cohesive. This isn't for me like bombastic. Well, shout out Paul again because he likes all the shout outs. This is not over the top in your face. This actually drinks relatively smooth, hashtag smooth, and it has a nice creaminess to it. The body is like higher side, a medium, low side, a full body. It has carbonation, but it's dialed back to, to enhance the uh, the experience of drinking this one. Yeah, man, this is this is god damn, this is tasty. Let's look at the uh, comments real quick here. Uh, we have Eric Lyons fan says like like B like B four could could yeah I think he was referring to the four to six packs. And then Jeff No Drink says that they do come in six packs now. I believe he said, didn't you, Jeff? Where? Yeah, they do come in sixers now, which that's nice. Did they bump the price up? I don't remember. I paid for this. It was like maybe like three bucks a bottle or something. Eric Gilbert says someone is growing a hipster beard. It should go great with the other half. Yeah, I'm just being lazy. I'm not growing this on purpose. I was actually gonna shave this and my head today, but guess what? Laziness. So at some point, uh, Eric Gilbert says coconut question mark. Uh, Jeff No Jinx says, Dr just drank one on the 12th. I gave it a 4.33. I always like it. Yeah, I'm digging it as well. Uh, we have <clears throat> Jesse says, Sherry. Not really getting any Sherry notes out of this one. Maybe out of the barrel age version. Uh, for uh, Christoph 420 says to uh, Eric says, uh, you're wrecked already. I believe Eric Gilbert's always wrecked. Eric uh, Gilbert says, tastes like cardboard. It doesn't taste oxidized. That one's going to taste oxidized. Todd shows up and says, what's up, sons? What's up, Todd? Thanks for showing up, buddy. And then 
And then uh, Nick with a nice little comment here, Josama Bon Milkman. That's something that that Greg would say. Yeah, I'm calling you Greg, Nick. That's probably the lowest the lowest anybody can go. Um, Jeff says $9.99 for a sixer in Michigan. Maybe I did pay like $250 for this bottle, maybe $225. A great deal for almost 10% barley wine. Uh, 420 says we only get the foot and four packs. Redbeard says I'm beginning to have a lot of beer. So at this point, Chris and Redbeard are basically getting sloshed, not going to be able to understand what they're posting in the comment section. And I'm going to be joining them once I crack open the barrel age one. Eric says, I'll have to revisit this one. The last time I had it, I wasn't a fan of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can see, like, I also remember I wasn't a fan of it, Eric, but this one has such a nice balance to it that, I mean, there's a lot of that malt sweetness that I love from English style barley wines, but there's a nice hop presence too. It's not overly hop forward. It's not overly bitter. Definitely finishes bitter, but not, not crazy. Uh, rating, I'd give that fresh a 4.25 out of five all day airy day it's uh pretty fucking delicious i am actually surprised i like this as much as i do i'm gonna put this off camera not gonna finish on camera because you guys know how i roll definitely gonna dump that down the drain because why would i drink a great beer so we're gonna get into the uh barrel aged version here the 2013 i'm gonna have to use my stopper jeff that you mentioned uh or that i bought some of because i'm not gonna be able to hammer this out tonight and if i do i'm gonna be all fucked up so let's see if I can get this one out. It's coming. We'll see if it does. Jesus. <laughs> you got to be shitting me on this. I don't think there's going to be a big hiss, but I could be wrong. I don't also don't want to ruin the table, my computer, anything of the budget. I'm not going to let it fly. I'd like to keep my ceiling intact, potentially. Holy shit. It's coming close here. Come on, are you fucking kidding me? Let's go. All right, we're almost there. Oh my God, the grand finale. Seriously? That's all? What kind of fucking pop was that? Gross. All right, anyway. <sighs> What a disappointment. I'm pouring this. I'd imagine the carbonation is going to suck balls on this one. Let's see. Oh, yeah. There's, there's like, no carbonation. Yo. Yo, this might be past its prime. Might be past its prime. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, not much carbonation. Now, let me let me pour a fresh one here. And let me pour the rest of... Yeah, we'll go with the crazy. Let's see. Look at all that carbonation. Yeah. All right. So look at all the carbonation. That <laughs> First off, this looks like just gross sewer water. This looks beautiful. So first off, on appearance, this looks terrible. Okay. This looks like, like I said, sewer water. I could use other descriptors. It doesn't look great. Uh, tons of alcohol legs on there. Very turbid and murky. And it just looks absolutely disgusting without question. It looks gross fucking disgust. It looks gross. Just let me just say that. Anyway, listen, I, uh, I don't like when beers are flat, but I can get over it. I can get over it as long as the beer is uh, fantastic. It smells fucking amazing. It smells oxidized. Okay. There's definitely a, like a wet cardboard type of thing, but outside of that, my God. <laughs> Nick said Paul's basement versus Paul's toilet, assuming he has a toilet. Very appropriate. And uh, Jeff Jeff says it won't need a stopper. No, no, it won't. All right. So first off, I can tell you is that at six years, over six years old, the <laughs> the barrel on this one is still suited. It's kind of just dominating the nose. Tons of vanilla and oak and and just like big spirit nose to it. It's just like, it, it, I feel like this one's going to burn, Chris. Then there's all that toffee and caramel stuff. There is absolutely no hop component to this one. So the base Bigfoot is kind of just gone as far as the hop is concerned. This is all barrel, all sweetness. Definitely wet cardboard oxidized type of thing going on. Yeah, it smells, it smells boozy, but it also smells amazing. But my mind is just like, there's no fucking carbonation here. It, it's going to not be great, even though I just said that carbonation, the, the mouthfeel, I always mention body mouthfeel in my reviews, like one of the first things. 
and it does play a pretty big role, substantial role on how I enjoy beers. When I drink a beer like this, I don't really care if there's not a lot of carbonation. I will say I will be bummed if there's almost no carbonation and it doesn't look like there's a lot. So cheers, everybody. There is absolutely no fucking carbonation left in this. The, the one, the main redeeming quality to this beer is that at 12.2%, I cannot tell you this is over 8%. All the booze that I was perceiving in the nose did not carry over whatsoever. There's absolutely no burn to this one. There's no indication that this is a 12 plus percent beer. Here's the problem. This has way, way past its prime at this point. Um, first off, absolutely no carbonation, like I said. The mouthfeel is very soft and smooth, and that's because there's no fucking carbonation. It doesn't really have any creaminess to it or anything. It's just it lacks carbonation. It's kind of drinking like drinking water, really. The taste itself, it's definitely oxidized. I get like that wet cardboard. Almost it's funny that Jesse mentioned sherry. One thing I get from oxidized barrel aged or oxidized big beers, but sometimes barrel aged beers, is they kind of develop that like port cherry type of thing going on. I'm getting that ever so slightly in here. This is more of like a wet cardboard type of thing. This isn't bad, though. Like, the, the flavors are actually good. You get a lot of toffee caramel, tons of vanilla, a little bit of like an oak tannin dryness on the back end. But everything is so just muted. This is this is actually very surprising to me. Not because I drank a six-year-old beer and there's no carbonation. That actually, to me, I kind of thought that going in that it would be, you know, lower, lower side of carbonation. But being cork and caged, I thought, hey, maybe the carbonation would hold up. Apparently, it did not. Uh, the taste itself, though, it's good but muted, and the carbonation kind of kind of kills it a little bit. Let me go to the uh, the fucking so many comments. Holy shit, boys and girls. Um, we have uh, Sexton Brewing. Ashley shows up and says, "Cheers, fools! I'm drinking a high quality H2. Oh, shout out to Adam Salmon. Uh, Bumpy says, "I sent a coovie coming. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what, Bumpy?" I don't think I'm doing a coovie. I don't want to ruin the fucking regular Bigfoot. I know that's disappointing. I just don't want to do it. Um, Eric Gilbert says, I'm getting trolled on Facebook, double commenting, got a good excuse this time. Sons! Never having a good excuse, Eric Gilbert, for your poor trolling. Uh, Nick says, hashtag cork noob. Uh, I just wanted to not potentially, you know, break my ceiling like you, Nick. Eric Gilbert says, get the pliers. Uh, Jeff says, I've honestly never seen the barrel age version. That's crazy, Jeff. It, when it shows up, it, it's all over the place. Uh, Christoph Fortoy says, get that cork. Ha -ha. Uh, Chris asked that if I need lube, perhaps, but not for that Not for that cork. Jesse says, that's a long cork. It is a fuck. Where did I put the cork? Yeah. Look at the, si look at the size of this cork. Look at it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we have... Eric Gilbert says, sad. Yeah, it is. Matt Albright says, so many. That's what she said opportunities during the bottle opening. That was what I was going for. That's why I paused and kept on making the reference. I mean, like, I knew it was going to happen. Redbeard says, worst cork. Yep. 420 says, never saw that type. That's going to be a bruto. Uh, Chris says, hashtag flat beer fail. Yep. Um, Jane, I already read that. Jeff said it won't need to stop or no. Uh, Eric Gilbert, hashtag money shot fail. Uh, Eric Gilbert, hashtag cardboard. Uh, Four twice says duct tape the top half of the grill bottle to it. That'd be hilarious. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, "I wonder if the corked uh, beers age that that long just lose carbonation. Usually, you, lose, you know, I mean, it's going to get all, all beers going to get oxidized. I thought with the the cork and cage that it wouldn't oxidize as much as it did, but it totally did." <laughs> Nick says, "Might need a modium more than a stopper." Yeah, Jesse, just come with the dad jokes. You you got corkscrewed. I mean, I just love every everything about this. Uh, Nick says, hashtag amazing super toilet. Drunken one says, that was disappointing. Jesse says, put the rest on your morning pancakes. Chris, sa Chris says, no likey. 21090 Brewing, I believe that's Todd, says, what's up, everyone? Hey, Sparky and Jesse, got the home brewing crew all here going nuts. Um, yeah, so if you have a barrel-aged Bigfoot from 2013 and it's in your cellar, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all. I, that's all I can say. I'm sorry. This is. Uh, this isn't bad. It's not a. It's, is it a fucking drain? Here's a question. Is it a drain pour? I think it's going to be a drain pour. Unfortunately, not because 
it's bad. Like rating wise, what the fuck do I give this? I don't even know how to rate this. All right, so let's just, if I just go by what I'm drinking in the glass right now, the flavor itself is probably a four out of five, okay? But you throw in the lack of carbonation and the muted characteristics to the beer, this is probably 3.5 out of five at best, more like a three to 3.25. That's where I put this. For me though, and I, this this will differ for anyone, everybody else. I know there's alcohol in here. It's 12.2%. I could drink this, get fucking hammered, and have a great time. Listen, I'm still losing weight. I'm still trying to manage my calories. To me, drinking the rest of this bottle in the state it's in is doing a myself a huge disservice in a lot of different ways. But B, I don't think I'd enjoy drinking the rest of that enough to offset the sheer amount of calories and percentage that's in there. So. I don't know. I, I this is probably going to be drain poured. Um, Jesse says you should borrow Chris's physics for that one. You know what? I don't even think the physics can help this one because it has no carbonation to begin with. Um, I'm fucking so disappointed. You know what though? You know what? You know what might make it better? I said I wasn't going to coovie it because I wasn't going to waste the Bigfoot. Right? I can get Bigfoot whenever the fuck I want. It's Kuvi time, boys and girls. So let's get a Kuvi going here. How ah, is it the Kuvi? It's the fucking Kuvi. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, oh, now it has carbonation. Now it has carbonation. Kuvi time. Did you guys think I wasn't going to do a Kuvi? <laughs> I mean, it's hashtag Kuvi. Also, shout out to uh, Don't Drink Beer. He's the one that says Kuvi, like I say. I just love saying. If you say Kuvi, you're doing it wrong. It's the fucking hashtag Kuvi. All right, anyway, let's look at this one. Now that looks like a beautiful beer. It definitely has some murk to it, but it still has, it retains the original um, look and appearance that the uh, base one had. Uh, tons of alcohol legs all over the fucking glass, but a uh, thin film of a khaki colored head, it looks beautiful. <sighs> you know what, it fucking doesn't smell great. <laughs> fucking, yo, this does not smell good. All right, so it's it smells terrible. Um, it smells like these shouldn't have been Kuvie, but that's what you came here for. Yeah, it, uh, Eric says Eric Lines fan says it looks like a brown ale. Honestly, I don't know how it's gonna come off on camera because I, I mean, I guess I could look at my camera and see. Yeah, it does looks like it looks darker in person though. It has like mahogany, deeper copper colors on the outsides it's like ruby red and mahogany and in the middle it has more of a brown ale look to it but yeah anyway it doesn't smell great i'm getting into it i don't even want to describe the smell because it wouldn't be appropriate that's fucking pretty delicious first off even though i went 50 50 on this Yo, the carbonation is still almost dead. I don't even know. This beer is fucking just killing everything it touches when it comes to the carbonation. It, um, so this has very slight carbonation, like a very slight hint of carbonation. The taste, though, blending them together, you still get the fucking brown sugars and coffee and toffee and caramel and whatever. There is a nice, sweeter, dark cherry component to this one I wasn't getting in the base one. Yeah, this is actually, this is 100% better than this piece of shit right here, right? Not as good as the base one. Um, I still can't tell you this is now, mixing it half and half, what do we got? 11% or so? Like higher tens? Nah, like eight, eight and a half. It uh, doesn't have as much hop character as the as the base one has, obviously, mixing. And it kind of, it kind of like the hop character kind of killed the, the barrel. And I'm just left with a lot of malt goodness here with a very slight bitterness on the back end. Uh, this is this is better than this. Not as good as the base. <clears throat> so rating, I'd probably go uh, higher 3.75, lower 4, somewhere like 3.8, 5, 3.9. 3, this is actually, if I had a couple more bottles, I should have bought a couple bottles of Bigfoot because I would just drink the rest of this and cut it down with the base and I think I would be fine. Not going to drink that how it is. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> it, 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 listen, I gave it a 3, 3.25, 3.5 at best. And I'm just talking about the flavors. The entire drinking experience, because it's oxidized, because it has no carbonation, because everything's muted, that's fucking, that's not good. Not good, boys. 
All right, let me go into comments here before I get so slosh I can't read. I can't read anyway. My God, I appreciate everybody. I've, I've had consistently 14 to 17 people watching. The comments are a little bit ridiculous, and I love every part of that, so keep them coming. So we have uh, Todd from 21090 says, Joe, have you had the 2019 KBS? I enjoyed it. I bought one. I'm going to drink it at some point. I don't know if I'll review it. KBS was one of the first beers I reviewed last year. Uh, I don't know how anyone feels about re-reviews of like different vintages, but I don't know if I'm going to review it just for that simple fact. Maybe I'll do it on a live review. I maybe like do that and like the something else that's popular. I don't know. Um, I'm into it. I mean, hey, if if you guys want me to review 2019 KBS next week on a live show, if you guys are curious, I'll totally can do that. Maybe do that and something else. I don't know. Let me know. I'm open up. I, I'm open to ideas. Uh, then Todd to two ten ninety says, well, that sucks. It didn't age. Yeah, no, it really does. Uh, Chris says, whack, are they schmack? Are they do? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Eric says, don't get, don't age next to the furnace. Yeah. Well, it totally didn't age next to the furnace. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have pulled, poured a, uh, or pulled a, uh, Nick's buddy heist. Not, was it heist? Who was it? Nick that aged that next to the furnace. It was Sith, right? Uh, well, Oh, French Hawes shows up. I'd imagine it's uh, probably it's probably Scott. Probably Scott says, what's up? Um, 420 says, flatter than the world for not terribly witty people. Ha <laughs> ha. Rain Air Praise shows up and says, send it to Chris. He can put it in his CO2 machine, the physics. Well, at physics? Well, at physics? <laughs> That's still That's awesome that you have that, Chris. Uh, Nick says, Covey technically is a Covey. Old and new. 10 out of 10 Covey. That was Chris. 93 garbage. Scott says, I came for potty mouth. Joe, I love it. Yeah, still, that's how I roll. I should probably swear my regular ones more, but I just, you know, it just comes naturally. It happens. Uh, 420 says, Christoph says, ooh, the Kuvi bros called it Satins. Yeah, they did. And then Eric says, he's watching me on his 50-inch television. Redbeard says, he's watching it on his 70-inch television. And both of you guys are idiots to watch me on anything other than a phone. Got to keep it minimized to about, you know, six inches. Yeah, I'll let you guys run with that one. Um, Redbeard says, my life in the cloud slash Cafe Del Bastardo Kuvi was shockingly okay. I could see that. I actually mixed the uh, Lagunitas IPA and their Imperial Stout. And it was pretty fucking delicious, kind of like a black IPA. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, chug, 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 chug. Nope, 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 nope. Off the 10th, Chris says, hashtag death beer. Yeah, it's a fucking death beer. It's bringing death to everything, everything it touches. Uh Scott says, tried a new one by Lawson yesterday. Chinooker, pretty damn tasty. Anyone have it? Uh, was that from their new brewery, uh, Scott? Because I feel like we'll we'll see that show up. I have not tried it. I only did the maple nipple. I've had Sip of Sunshine and the Super Session everything. Chris says, two out of five, hashtag mook. My own opinion, Quickie, even though none of his beers are Quickies anymore. Uh, Redbeard says, Redbeard doesn't fuck around, baby. Redbeard, if you ever refer to yourself in the, the third person, I might have to choke you out, buddy. Uh, Todd from 2109 says, just pour the 13 down the drain and stick with the base. LOL. Now you got to do the Kovey. Todd, you got to do the Kovey. And then uh, Maxwell Star says, pie out of five. Uh, <laughs> Jesse says it needed a 70-30 Kovey. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Redbeard says, all the jealous of your viewers in your comments. Why are you jealous of my viewers in my comments, Redbeard? You have like 800 subs, buddy. Settle down. Uh, and then, uh, Christoph says, Joe is the comment master. Ah, uh, ahem, pie. Um, Chris says, KBS, fuck the world. Uh, Todd says, we are reviewing 19 versus 18 KBS tomorrow. Nice. Last year, oh, I forgot whose channel I did on. I think it was, was that on Craig? Can't be reviews. We did, I think the 17 and the 18. It was fun doing them back and forth. Um, Nick confirms that it was Sith who aged Sith aged. I believe it was a Rochefort 10 next to his fucking furnace. I'm surprised when it didn't come out all at well, I don't know. I was just kind of in my furnace room. What? You know, I mean, what? Jesse says, I'm smart. I'm not dumb. I'm smart watching Joe on my phone. That is Jesse. You're fucking super intelligent based on that alone. I mean, that is one of the greatest things. Scott from French house says, yeah, uh, I think it was from Lawson's New Brewery. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they've been pumping them out lately. Redbeard says, I totally and completely want you to choke me out. That sounds way too sexual for me, Redbeard. Not going to happen, buddy. Um, Nick, doing the best Redbeard impersonation by not spell checking, says, chalk his chicken out. Sorry, choke his chicken out. He wanted to clarify. Fuck's sakes, man. And then Greg says, oh, Greg, bylog shows up. What up, Greg? He says, "The definitely needs more uniform. Get on it, Joe. Be a man. I'm, I'm going to let you down every time, Greg. Every single time. And that's on you, buddy. 
Craig from Cat Beer Review says, yes, me, you, and Paul. Yeah, it was uh, Paul, Craig, and I, and we did uh, KBS 17 and 18 on Craig's channel, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I might do 18, 19. I don't know. I feel like every – here's the thing about when it comes to reviews. I feel like every year people review the vintages of, like, KBS and Bourbon County and things like that. I don't know if I want to re-review beers like that. They're totally different vintages, going to taste different. They're not the same batch. I get it. I just – I don't know. I, I think I just should review all the other half beer and piss off Eric Gilbert because – you know, that's how it goes. Um, Christoph 420 says, FTW equals for the win. Sorry, didn't mean to pork the earth. Uh, for the win, FTW, yes, clarified. Uh, fuck the world is also another uh, word, uh, use for that acronym as well, Christoph. Um, I prefer both, but, you know, fuck the world is the way to go. Eric Gilbert says, uh, I moved my cellar to the windowsill during July. Well, that's almost as good as me because... Usually when July pops out and we have a ton of sun, I just take my entire cellar and just place it directly in sunlight for a couple days and just, you know, then I, I mean, this one has been in the sunlight for probably four years consistently out of the six. So yeah, it's the way to go. Uh, Scott says my vote is not to do a re-review. Yeah. I, that's the thing. Like it's not, I'm not saying I'm never going to do re-reviews or whatever, but I feel like if I did KBS 18, 19 is probably going to be slightly different but I don't know if it deserves a re-review itself. I think I should, I think I'm going to start a new series of uh, reviews that are like comparison or like battle beers or something like that, where I do like, you know, side-by-side -side comparisons of two different vintages or different beers to one another. I don't know. I was planning on doing that at some point. Jesse says, you haven't reviewed all the other half beers? No, Jesse. No, never, never going to be able to happen. Red Beer says the profanity filter you've got turned on is ruining my life. I don't have a profanity filter turned on, Redbeard. Maybe that's your uh, hashtag uh, teen years. I don't know. Uh, Todd laughs at uh, Jesse asking if I reviewed the other half beers, all of them. Uh, Craig says, maybe getting some other half soon. We'll see. If so, we'll do some duo reviews with Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews. Probably on his channel, though, not to piss off all of my subs because I feel like a third of my reviews are other half at this point. Uh, Craig says, or sorry, Chris says, I'm going to re-review Liquid Arts Fest 2018 soon. It's in the bedroom cellar. Oh, man. At least you only bought a couple of them, right, Chris? You didn't buy 25 of them like Redbeard and couldn't pay the bills. Um, Eric Gilbert, or Eric Alliance fan says, I'm going to do King Cobra. Leave it to Eric to bring in the malt liquor. Hashtag malt liquor. Hashtag. Um, didn't you already do King Cobra, Eric? Or do you, you never did that before? Because if you're doing a re-review of King Cobra, what the fuck? Um, 420 says, LOL, Red Mad, Tyler's watching, so we can't. Eddie Murphy. Not sure what it was just said. Not sure I want to know. Redbeard says, how the heck do you not have a single person modded? LOL. Do I need mods? I feel like I read the comments well enough. I don't need mods at some point. At some point. Redbeard, if you want to be a mod, totally not going to be you, buddy. <laughs> Nick says, King Cobra Kobe? You can't. I, is there multiple King Cobras? Redbeard says, any comments with any swears are not being shown? I don't know. Do I have that? Is there a way for me to change it? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. It happens. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, and Finback. Well, I did the 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 collab between Finback and Other Half, and that was it. Alex Dudick says, you see this Other Half Genesee collaboration called Dreamail? You better do that. Here's the thing. They, yeah, so Genesee and Other Half have um, collabed on a beer called Jenny Dreamail. So they're taking the base Genesee Cream Ale, and they're giving it the, the so-called dream or daydream uh, treatment that Other Half does. So they're hitting it with a little lactose and citra hops. And it's going to be released next Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And there's only 170 cases. And I'm not going to be able to probably go to that. So if anybody out there can get the Genesee Dream Mail and hook me up with one, you'd be my best friend forever. Uh, Redbeard says, or you've got top chat turned on instead of live chat. I do have top chat turned on. Let me, let me, let me switch to live chat. I don't know why. I always have the live chat. I don't understand. Yeah. Um. Greg says, if you delivered fresh milk to all the Southerners, maybe they could fork a wall. This, th Greg, this is why you're not allowed on my channel. Eric says, hashtag malt liquor. Eric Gilbert says, fuck. I think that might be, I think that uh, might be in response to the Jenny Dream Ale. Uh, Christoph says, say it in a New Yorkish. I got you a mod right here. I don't, I, listen, I am from Western New York. I'm closer to Canada, Ohio, and Pennsylvania than I am in New York City. So I don't have, I have the Western, I can say taps, taps never saps, saving you more. Red Spear says, you've totally, you've totally got top chat on, live chat shows all. Okay, I switched it. I switched it. Settle down, Red Beer. 
Um, 21090 Room says, we also have the Fremont B-Bomb and Dark Starter Review. Viewers sent us these, so we can't wait. Heard amazing things about them. I've had the um, Dark Star, uh, Todd. Yeah, they, Fremont makes awesome barrel-aged beers. You're going to love both of those. Uh, Red Beer says, nice. Mm, going back to a while ago, you bastard. Uh, <laughs> Maxwell Star says, he's from North Tanawanda. Yeah, I am. I'm from North Tanawanda. Malta Montreal shows up and says, just want to say hello. What's up, Malted? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Greg says, when are you going to create a weekly show when you and a few of your friends can pick a beer each week and study it and offer opinions along with a score? Totally a unique idea. We can call it Beer Analysis 102, and it will totally be amazing. Eric Gilbert says, and hacking darts and gars, eh? That's like the Western New York, Ontario mashup. Malted in Montreal says, long time no see. It's been, yeah, quite a while. What are you up to, Malted? Uh, Greg says each panel member can wear a different uniform. Fucking Greg. We just get off the uniform, okay? You got a fetish. You need to get that under control. 420 says totally a hack and heavy darts in here, buddy. I've caught up the comments. Anyway, so Sierra Nevada Bigfoot 2019 vintage, 4.25 out of 5. Way better than I anticipated. Look at that fucking lacing. Sons, look at that lacing. Can't beat that. Meanwhile, uh, I sat on this way too long. This is the 2013 vintage of Barrel Age Bigfoot. I would imagine, and this is what I would say, if you have a 14 or a 15 or a 16 in your in your cellar or in your fridge or wherever you have it and you're sitting on it, I would probably grab them and drink them, share them. Uh, this one had basically zero carbonation. It was definitely oxidized. I'd imagine the 14, 15, and 16 is probably close to that. And going forward, if I ever purchase it, I might purchase another one of these and like drink it relatively fresh because this kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth in two separate ways. A, because I sat on it and I thought it would be amazing. I didn't think it was going to be amazing. I didn't think it was going to be like this. But number two, it actually didn't taste good. So that's the other way. Jason Forey shows up and says, oh, scram. What's up, Jason? Thanks for stopping by, man. Um, Greg says, I want to get off to the uniform, but need your help for fuck's sakes. Jamie shows up and says, cheers, Joe. Got to do a cuvee. Actually, that's the motherfucking cuvee. Jesse, this is, or, um, Jamie, this is the cuvee. This is the cuvee because this was the regular and it had a lot of carbonation. This had almost none. And the cuvee gave me a little bit, but yeah, the, the cuvee is not as good as the base beer. Let's just say that. But yeah. Uh, this was fun to do, um, but this is this is a good example. This beer specifically is a great example of aging and what can happen when you age a beer too long, when you totally sit on it for way too long. Um, a lot of people like to age beers. They like to just buy a bunch and throw them in their cellars. They're like, oh man, that's a you know, 10, 12% beer and it can age. And I'm guilty of it. And honestly, in the last two or three years, I've stopped doing that, just buying beers to age. If I want to age something. I buy something that I know can age. If you want to buy a six pack or a case of Bigfoot L's, yeah, that's going to age for probably 10, 15, 20 years. Barrel aged beers, they can always go haywire. They can go sideways. And when you buy something like this, you should always buy something and drink it fresh and then buy one to age if you want to. So you know the comparison. Me being a new back in you know 2013, early 2013, late 2012, I should have bought two of these. I should have drank one fresh. And then I'd have some kind of comparison in my mind at the very least for this. And I don't, all I have a compare, the only comparison I have for this beer is the 2015 and 2016 barrel aged beers. And those are fucking delicious. So this beer relatively fresh or slightly aged is amazing. Do not age these for five plus years. I don't think it's going to be uh, all that great. Nick says, Joe's getting more and more drunk as this goes on. I'm actually not drunk, feeling good. Uh, but I will be probably hammered at some point. I would have been hammered if I had to drink this entire bottle. Luckily, I do not. Jesse says, how did you store the bottle? Corks need to stay wet. Uh, mostly sideways, Jesse. I only turned it uh, uh, you know, right side up when I put it in. the. I, so I put this in the fridge because the cellar temperature was a little bit warmer than I wanted uh, for about a half an hour. But yeah, that was about it. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I... So I'm trying to think, actually, it may have been half and half, half sideways and half straight up, because a lot of my boxes that I have in there are straight up. Regardless, the, the corks themselves and everything, the, the problem with this beer isn't so much the taste of it. 
It's the fact that it has no carbonation because it was oxidized because oxygen got in there and the carbonation escaped. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, whatever. The cork actually itself is fine. Like this is one of those new age corks. It didn't dry out. It still has a firm, like, you know, it's the cork itself is fine. Uh, the beer itself is not. Uh, Nick says, not with beer. Corks will rot in beer. They need to stay wet with wine. Uh, Rainer Prairie says, corks do not improve with age. They dry out and become useless. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think the storage of this beer, because I stored this in my cellar ever since I had it, consistent temperatures, never above. I think this always, like, and, and again, uh, let me just say this one, one more time. Um, in my, my cellar is just in my basement, and it always stays in a consistent temperature. It's never really above, say, 65, never really below 60, usually in 60, 65 range. And I've aged a lot of beers in here that have been completely fine. Like I've had some beers in my cellar for five plus years that are amazing. I'll give you a, give you a perfect example was um, for my 200th review, I did Hoppin' Frogs uh, batch 200 or whatever it was. That beer aged just really well. Yeah, it was oxidized a little bit. That wasn't cork and cage. It was just regular, you know, uh, regular cap and whatnot. But I've had so many beers that aged fine. So this is the lone exception. And I feel like it's just the beer itself and how it happened. Greg says, I no longer purposely age, purposely age anything, although I keep so uh, keep some stuff around for verticals. I often find aging makes a beer worse, but sometimes can prove it. Usually really boozy beers can age a few months. I would say for me, the one thing that I have really come to figure out aging beers myself, beers that have a lot of adjuncts or beers that are barrel aged, aged extremely poor. I mean, like the, the aging on an adjunct beer or barrel aged beer maybe 10, 20% of the time actually work out. And more often than not, they really don't improve the beer. They just change the beer. A beer like this, that is just an you know, American barley wine, that's made for aging. If you want to take a massive imperial stout, sure, that's aged. You can age that for you know, 15, 20 years. And you're probably going to have differences to the beer, the profile of the beer, uh, the taste of the beer, everything. But they should still age well. I feel like when you start introducing barrels and adjuncts, that's when you go wrong. Um, Christoph says, I have some arrogant bastard in here and the beer. <laughs> I see what he did there. He's not wrong. Greg says, drink the entire bottle, Joe. Get drunk. You'll wake up with no memories and wearing uniform. I'm not going to give you that satisfaction, Greg. Erica Lyons fan says, go back to drinking the Bigfoot out. Yeah, maybe I should. That's a good. Cheers, Eric. That's a good idea. <laughs> Jason says, we don't get basements in California. Uh, Mediterranean climate. So then you don't even need to age beers. They age them in your closet. Well, you have, here, here's the question though for you, Jason. You guys have AC, right? So many misnomers and, and just like, just misinformation when it comes to aging beer in general. The key thing about aging beer is not so much the temperature. Yes, the preference is keeping it in a cool, dark place, right? But I've aged beers for four or five years that are consistently in a 60, 65 degree uh, location. And they're fine. It's keeping them at a consistent temperature during that time. You don't want variations in aging. You don't want a beer hitting 40. You don't want to put a beer in the fridge at you know 36 degrees and then throw it in the cellar at 65 degrees and then put it back in the fridge. You, you want it consistently to stay within like a five degree range. That's the way I've been taught. And more often than not, this is the lone exception to me cellaring beer. I can count probably on one hand over the last three or four years that I've pulled a beer out of my cellar and it comes off this one. Now, it's it all depends on the beer. It all depends on, I mean, I don't know how much carbonation was in here to begin with. It's certainly oxidized, but this probably didn't have a ton of carbonation to begin with. You're putting it in the barrel for over a year, so carbonation is probably going to be lower to begin with. So it all depends on the beer, depends on the style, depends on the adjuncts, depends on the if it's barrel age or not. But always keep them consistent is the way that I've been taught anyway. Uh, Chris says unageable beer period. Eric says any adjunct with that Bigfoot, uh, not with this one. This is just barrel aged and the base one is just a plain barley wine. Uh, Nick says aging a barrel aged beer is a crapshoot and unwanted pathogen may come from the barrel wind up hurting the shelf life. Yeah. That's another thing when you're barrel aging beer, you can definitely, I mean, there's a lot of breweries out there, a lot of top notch breweries that have had beers that have turned and, and have basically become infected with something they don't want. And you wait six months, you wait a year. Yeah. I mean, it can just be completely ruined. So uh, props to Bigfoot for or this beer, specifically barrel age Bigfoot 2013 vintage for not being infected. 
but it also has no carbonation. Eric Gilbert says could be the barrel. I think it, I think this beer, and again, I didn't drink this fresh and that's on me, but I think this beer to begin with probably didn't have a lot of carbonation or if so, it was moderately carbonated. You're talking six plus years, that carbonation has leaked out. I will say one thing, when I was doing the cork and Cajun out of this beer, uh, I noticed that even though I sat there and, you know, I struggled a little bit for like 20 seconds, I noticed it was really loose moving it. So I feel like it wasn't as tight as it could have been. Could have been part of the problem. Uh, Bylock says, I've actually had good luck aging double Tempest, never had an off bottle. Bring out your day. A dead seems to age well for a year or so, then sometimes drops off. The 2014 vintage dropped off hard after six months. Personally love the taste of quads freshest. They become too sweet for me after one to two years. Yeah. And I mean, with, it goes without saying everything is personal preference, right? So, I mean, you, you don't like the sweetness after one or two years. I love quads five years on them. They just, they somehow, you know, are in that wheelhouse, wheelhouse for me. Uh, but I think when you introduce barrels and introduce adjuncts, that's when it's a crapshoot. You talk about barrel aged double Tempest being awesome. And then you have bring out your dead that hasn't been awesome after six months or a year. How do co cognac barrels age in comparison to bourbon barrel age? Isn't double Tempest uh, bourbon or whiskey? So now you're comparing different barrels. I, I like, I don't have enough information. I'm not going to sit here and lie and pretend like I know it, but I feel like different barrels are obviously going to have different shelf lives, especially when it comes to barrel aged beers. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, Eric Gilbert says those Kentucky bastards can only age a year, then down the hill from there. Uh, off the test says you should have worn the ice cubes in the ice t-shirt. It would have made the beer better. Chris, come on, man. Come on, Chris. Jason Forey says most cognac are ex bourbon. Well, that's good to know. Like I said, I, I can't sit here and say, I know that. So that's interesting. Um, Bylog says double compass is bourbon. And then Nick says, fully agree, Chris, that shows uniform. My uniform is the Ice Cube and Ice T shirt. Like, that seems like a terrible uniform. How's that a uniform? Like, that's not a uniform. Like, a uniform is an actual uniform. You guys are fucking stupid. Uh, Bylock says, Cognac Age is fine, but Bellwoods hasn't always used the best barrels. And that's that's another thing, quality of the barrels. How old are the barrels? How much, how wet are the barrels? How much uh, actual characteristics are they imparting into the beer? That's, that's again, and, and I'll say it for the last time because I've been talking about it for, I don't know, straight. When you introduce something that is other than the base beer, adjuncts barrels, it's a crapshoot. It really is. You, you don't exactly know. And then uh, Jesse says, I was aging Old Rasputin, and then two months later, I drank it, no willpower. Yeah, you know, Old Rasputin's a great beer that ages extremely well from my experience. Uh, Greg Bylock says, not a uniform. Don't let them confuse you, Joe. You know what, Greg? In this situation, I actually agree with you, and that's the last time you'll ever hear me say that, but I agree with you in this situation. Anyway, um, pretty much done with the reviews. I appreciate We kind of just went off tangent with like aging and stuff, which is fine by me. Uh, down to 11 viewers. I just can't, listen, I cannot get over the fact that, that you guys are watching this live and that's just, it's such a good time. So anyway, since I have 11 people here watching now, next week, I had planned on potentially doing these two beers, if people are interested. The Esch Schenkerla, the uh, Rausch beer, and the Hellas Lager beer. These are both smoked. Well, this is actually using smoked malts. This is just imparting smoke flavor from the brewery itself. It's going to do a dual review of that. I also have two Dogfish Head beers, their Sequench and their American Beauty. If you guys have any interest in either one, let me know. Post in the comments. Post in the, uh, in the actual live comments as well. Um, the reason I do these live reviews are A, to do stuff live, but to B, to drink stuff that you guys have had before. I feel like most people have had Bigfoot at some point in their life. I mean, especially if you're in the U.S. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm down to do this each week. Two weeks from now is actually going to be a combination of two things. Actually, Monday, April 1st of 2019 is going to be two things. It's going to be my 300th beer review on the channel, and it's going to be my one-year anniversary and I'm going to do two different live reviews. I'm going to do Black Butte uh, 30th, which is their 30th anniversary of their Black Butte. Uh, well, I think it's their 30th anniversary of the brewery. And I'm going to do a live review of that to celebrate the one-year anniversary of my channel, also the 30, 300th beer review. I'm also going to do another beer along with that. I don't know, probably another anniversary beer to celebrate. But next week, it's kind of open. I thought I was going to go with the Ash Shankarla, um, but I would be down to do with the Dogfish Head. If people want to see the KBS, 2019 and something else. I can do that. Just let me know. No, you know what I was going to do? I'm going to tell you what I was going to do right now, Chris, but I didn't want to give Greg the satisfaction. I was actually for my 300th review. 
I was going to buy a Milkman uniform off a website and wear that fucking thing in the 300th review, but not say anything about the uniform or anything. Just do the review. But then I realized Greg does not deserve that satisfaction, and I canceled that order. So sorry, Greg. You're constant harping. I would have done that if you just didn't constantly harp on me. So that's your fault, Greg. Unfortunate, man. Uh, finish up the comments here. Uh, we have Bylock says most hard liquors, unless stated otherwise, are aged in old bourbon barrels. Nice. Uh, Craig Kent Beer Refuse says, Cheers, Joe. Thank you, uh, Craig. Appreciate you watching, buddy. Chris says, Good job, Joe. Thank you, Chris. Hopefully, you're just a shit face as I'm about to be. I'm actually getting to that point now. Uh, Jesse says, Do the, the Sri Lanka sh Shakurla. Uh, I can't listen. I'm pronunciation. I'm going to butcher it. It's going to be fun. Um, Nick says, Those two would be cool. Uh, Greg says you should do an after show and invite the no good Nicks and <laughs> nerd nerd wells from the internet. Not gonna happen, Greg. Uh, Drunken one says cheers to all of us. Thank you, Drunken one, for showing up. Chris says uh, asked about the April Fool's joke and I already told him. Eric Gilbert says cheers, dudes. Christoph says cheers to all my beer mates. Thank you for showing up, Christoph. Appreciate the support, buddy. Greg says really should be a police uniform first. No one believes you would have done that. I had the order ready, man, and you fucked it. So that's on you, Greg. I'm sorry. Uh, Greg says my uniform, or Christoph says my uniform is a Tesla hat. Um, Maxwell Starr says, uh, good work, Joe. Thanks. Appreciate it, Nick. I can't believe Nick showed up for life. Like Nick, listen, Nick, this is not, this is not me insulting you, but Nick, you know, he's a busy man. He's got stuff going on. And, uh, so he only does the beer analysis each week. He actually posted a video this, this week on how to pour, I believe it was, was it, a, it was a Guinness, right? In 4k. Uh, but, uh, I appreciate Nick stopping by. He doesn't watch too many beer tubers anymore. So shout out to Nick. Um, Richie Z says, uh, hi to Eric Gilbert and also says, Hey Joe, cheers to a new week. Thanks for showing up, Richie. Yeah. Cheers to a new week. This is the best way to start a week. And then, uh, Chris says sub to off 10. So yeah, I'm uh, Chris, come on. You're red bearding me right now. No offense to red beard. Alex, uh, says cheers. Y'all have a great week. Thanks Alex. Thanks for showing up. Eric says, uh, Eric Lyons fan that says peace to Joe. And Nick says, you're always insulting me, Joe. Hey, I posted a review Sunday. So uh, let, let me just finish Nick. You cut me off. So Nick, I appreciate him stopping by. He doesn't post a lot of content anymore. He did post a review, and he posted a 4K Guinness review. So let me just shout out everybody that was in the comment section. Go sub to all these individuals because they do good stuff. Uh, Chris from Off the 10th, good friend of mine, and I'm going to tag him in a video at some point here in the near future. It's going to be a vlog, Chris, so you're going to get tagged because basically it's a – you're going to get tagged. Let's just say that. Shout out to Nick over at Maxwell Star. Check out Beer Analysis 101 every Wednesday night at 8 Let's just say 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's poops involved. So shout out to Scott and Jeff over at French Hall's Beer Reviews. They do a good job as well. Check them out. Shout out to Eric over at Eric Lyons Fan. Great dude. Shout out to Todd and Andy and the boys over at 21090 Brewing. They have a lot of, I think they have like over 2,000 subs at this point, but they do an awesome job. Their Cellar Reserve Series is fantastic. Go check them out. Uh, shout out to Redbeard. Uh, even though he constantly is jealous of my viewers for some reason shout out to carrie he, he does a good job on his channel uh shout out to jesse bumpy road brewery great dude does really good tastings of new hampshire beers and uh does a lot of homebrewing stuff too so shout out to him shout out to 420 christoph he doesn't have a chat oh he does have a channel but it's not beer related but shout out to him go check out his channel uh we also have um who else am i missing here there's so many people that showed up obviously craig can beer reviews he is known as craig he is known as greg regardless he's the uh He's the king of beer tube now. So if you're not checking him out, then uh, you're probably doing it wrong. Uh, shout out to who else showed up? Somebody else showed up, right? I was going to say, oh, Malton Montreal. Uh, he does whiskey stuff and mostly spirits and whatnot. Uh, and I believe that's it. Rainy Iron Parade, appreciate him stopping by. Appreciate Bylog, Greg stopping by. Appreciate everybody stopping by, honestly. It was a lot of fun. Shout out to the shout outs, as Nick says. So I'm going to shut this down. Appreciate everybody stopping by. I don't know if Redbeard and Chris are still doing a live show over on Redbeard's channel. If they are, I might jump over there. Check it out. If they're not, then forget I said this. So be on the lookout next Monday. I'm good. Oh, so actually, hang on. Time out. Chris, Chris, why didn't you? Chris, you get Chris. Listen, you get Chris. You got to tell me about this stuff. First and foremost, shout out to Chris over at Off the Time. Second, that's two shout outs for Chris now. Number two, we're going to actually do a homebrew a duo review on my channel Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ashley Sexton, forgot to shout him out. Sexton Brewing, go check him out. Homebrew channel, great dude, great content. He actually gave Chris and I a, I believe it was a cocoa, I want to say it was a cocoa-infused stout. And uh, 
Yeah, Chris and I are going to review it on my channel, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Thursday night before the uh, Rod J Beer Flow Show. Him and I are going to review it. It's going to be a lot of fun. It should be terrible. It might be great. I don't know. I was going to offer to do it on his channel, but he said my channel, so we're going to do it on my channel. And uh, yeah, so show up for that. Yeah, it was a cocoa infused stout. I don't know if it was Imperial. I think it's like seven and a half percent, so not quite. I don't think. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to probably get that up here later tonight or tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, next Monday probably do the uh, the two smoke beers. And we should have a lot of fun. So appreciate everybody stopping by. I'm actually shutting it down this time. Thanks to all for joining me. And until the next one, cheers.